Good morning, church. Just recently, we have celebrated uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My message also is related to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, the title of my message today is Divine Justice Revealed in the Resurrection of Jesus. Divine Justice Revealed in the Resurrection of Jesus. A couple of years ago, a case, a criminal act that has taken place in, in Hyderabad shook the entire country. A girl has been raped and brutally murdered by three people. And unfortunately, two among them were minors. They killed her. And uh, that news shook everyone. And uh, people, they left their houses and they came onto the roads rallying and camp doing so many campaigns asking for the justice. And surprisingly and suddenly, these three people were killed in the hands of the police. Then raised so many questions. Some are saying justice has been made, justice has been given. And some are saying it is not right to punish anyone without the law. And uh, they have to be punished according to the law. And the, one of the wives of these criminals who was uh, a minor was asking the government and the courts, you killed him because of the crime, but what about me? Now you made me a victim. You, have, you should have uh, punished him according to the law. But uh, whatever the reasons are behind, but you have killed my husband and you have to compensate and you have to provide justice to me. We really do not know what happened in between or behind, what are the reasons behind the death of these uh, three people. And that is not the topic I'm going to talk about. But this particular incident clearly have shown that people have different perspectives about justice. Justice is something that everyone seek. And uh, in fact, to say justice is the primary virtue of any social system. No social systems can work and can be successful without proper justice. And justice is the cry of every individual and society. Every human in the world will be crying for the justice. Since the human life started and uh, human governance started, people were constantly crying for the justice. And even some societies and some communities are crying for justice. As I said, justice differs from culture to culture and time to time. It, it is different for everyone. It is different from person to person also. So certain things which are right in our culture may not be right in the other culture. Certain things that we consider as crime or uh, violation of ethics and morals may not be the same in some other cultures. As long as we have different morals, ethics and cultures, we will be having different perspectives about justice. Every culture, every morality, every ethic has their own uh, perspective about justice. And at the same time, this justice changes from time to time. It appeared previously in the uh, in the old day, sorry in the old days, the justice was different because their morals are different, their ethics are different. Whenever morals or ethics change, the justice also changes because justice will be completely based upon the social uh, principles which we call morals or ethics. And uh, as I also said, justice is different from person to person. It is because we judge ourselves with our intentions, but we judge others based on their actions. Though we are in one single culture and time and place, 
most of the times we will be doing that that is why what is what we feel just may not be the same for the other person it varies from person to person and the opinion our opinion about justice is based on our perspectives or our nature so our our opinion about justice will clearly reveal the nature and perspective of an individual or even a society what is justice the most common definition for justice is the principle that people receive uh, the principle that people receive that which they deserve with the interpretation of what what then constitute deserving being impacted upon by numerous fields with many differing viewpoints and perspectives including the concepts of moral correctness based on ethics rationality law religion equity and firmness in basically <coughs> the definition says justice is receiving what we deserve and there are so many perspectives about justice one among them uh, is uh, uh, natural law based justice based on natural law a, a british philosopher john locke says justice derives from the natural law and there is another perspective which is very common which is called social contract theory it says the justice is derived from the mutual agreement of everyone as i said the morals and all are or um, uh, composed or constituted based on mutual agreement of group of people and there is another perspective called uh, uh, utilitarian utilitarian perspective which says justice is based on the best outcome for the greatest number of people if 10 people are there and justice is something that that is going to benefit nine people is justice but i don't know how far it is fair what about the remaining one that is utilitarian philosophy uh, perspective about justice and there is another perspective called egalitarian perspective they say justice can exist only where there is equality if equal values respect has been given to everyone then only justice can exist and we in india have enough history to talk about this equality the kind of justice certain groups certain social groups have exercised and certain social groups have suffered and there is another perspective which is very well known to most of the people that is uh, uh, retributive uh, justice it says the wrong doing should be punished punished to ensure justice if anybody have done uh, done anything wrong and the wrong person must be punished this is called retributive justice and there is another other perspective which uh, fits much closer <coughs> excuse me <coughs> this perspective is much closer to the biblical perspective and christian perspective but it is not the complete perspective that has been revealed in jesus christ this is not the divine justice that is revealed in jesus but this is a closer perspective many christians would be talking about in fact majority of them will be talking about restor uh, uh, retributive uh, justice uh, where god punishes the evil doer and this restorative perspective is slightly different from that it says restorative justice is an approach uh, justice that focuses on the needs of the victim there are wherever a crime takes place wherever the oppression takes place there are people who are oppressed reaching out to the needs of the oppressed people is called restorative justice if they lost something restoring them back to normal position helping them in all the ways possible to help, to come back to the normal so that is called restorative justice but we are talking today is about 
divine justice. And there is a perspective called the, uh, justice. The, there's a perspective which says justice can come only from God. And God alone can define justice. In fact, there is a big study about it uh, because most of our justice are based on the commandments of God. So what they what these people say, I mean, discuss is uh, the God God defined what justice or whatever God said is just. This is a discussion many people are having. In fact, that is not our focus today, but we will be talking about divine justice, how God is executing his justice, how God is revealing his justice, how God, how God's justice look like, how God offers his justice to us. That is the focus of my message today. The divine justice has been revealed in the Bible, but the understanding was not developed from the beginning. If you look at the Bible, there is an evolution there is a, of the perspective of divine justice. We have to look from beginning till the end to understand the journey of humanity in understanding the divine justice. God is the same and he remained the same from beginning till the end. But our understanding has been changed. And the Bible gives a very clear picture and it is a very big, great witness uh, to show how we have evolved in understanding the divine justice of God. In the beginning, we understand that justice is not about life after death. It's all here. You will get for what you did, not as a punishment. Now, today, as Christians, when we talk about justice, we always think about, okay, in the days are going to come, Jesus is going to come back and he is going to execute his justice. And in the eternal life, we are going to experience the true justice. And even in book of Acts, we find some souls will be crying unto the Lord, Lord, when are you going to judge? And when are you going to uh, avenge our blood. In fact, the better translation would be, when are you going to judge our blood? When are you going to vindicate <coughs> to our blood? But however, we find that people are looking uh, into, uh, sort of looking into future uh, uh, for justice. We all are looking that God is going to ex execute his justice at the end. But if you look at the Bible, that was not the perspective of the people for those people. Justice was here in this life only because they did not develop the uh, perspective. They did not understand about uh, the life after death. For them, everything was born. We are born here, live here, die here. That's all life is all about. Uh, the, a group of uh, people in the Bible we find who strongly teach about it is uh, Sadducees. They believe only in the first five books of the Bible. There, for them, justice is something you do or you receive what you do. Sorry, for you receive for what you did. And there is nothing called life after death for them. So there is no way to no no nothing to talk about justice that is going to come after life or that is going to come in the. Uh, future in ap uh, apocalyptic sense. You will get for what you have done. And at the same time, it is not as a punishment. It is the principle that God had given. We find it in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you, that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. This is a choice that God has set before them. And this is a result. It is a principle that God explains. You will get for what you did. <coughs> so these blessings and curses are completely based on people's obedience to the commandments of the Lord. So that is how they were looking about justice. And the next step is people were looking that something bad may happen to them. Punishment may come to them because of what they have done. The great example we can see in book of Job. Job, Job suffered 
for no reason. And his friends come and they discuss with Job about why he is suffering, why, why he is going through what he is going through. And most of the conversation says, Job, you might have done something wrong. Job, you might have done something wrong. That's why God is just and he has punished you. And Job says, I have done nothing wrong and why God punished me? And that is the discussion uh, was going uh, would be going in the entire book of Job. At the end, God comes and says, these friends of Job did not speak what is right about him. But well, we can understand very clearly the perspective there is uh, uh, people uh, suffer uh, because of what they have done. And the next step is people were praying uh, for, you know, punishment of, of the oppressor. Psalm 83 is a very great picture of it. In Psalm 83, the psalmist would be crying continuously, God, when are you going to judge these Gentiles? These people are going to come upon me and they are going to devour me. They are, you know, they are troubling me so much. And you do this to them, you do that to them, you, uh, you zap them, you, you, you rain, uh, rain of fire upon them, let their, uh, you know, their dead bodies scatter all over uh, the wilderness. You know, those are the prayers people were having because they were being oppressed. For them, judgment is punishing the oppressor. And we find we can find a next step of this perspective about justice that is strengthening the oppressed, which is most closely to restorative justice. What we have said before is more uh, closely to retributive justice. And this restorative justice can could be found in Psalm chapter 9, verse 7 to 10. The words read, But the Lord shall endure forever. Oh, sorry, but, but the mercy of the Lord endures forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall administer judgment for the people in righteousness. Uh, sorry, he will administer judgment for the peoples in uh, uprighteousness. The Lord also will be refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. These words clearly show that God is someone who is going to stand for the oppressed and he is going to redeem the oppressed and he is going to strengthen the oppressed. So that is the judgment these people were looking for. That is a judgment they are crying for. That is called restorative justice. But in all these perspectives, one thing is very clear. That is human justice is receiving what we deserve. If an oppressor is there, he should be punished. If somebody is oppressed, he should be strengthened. This is the perspective of human justice that has been developed in the Bible. What about the divine justice? The divine justice was preached by Jesus. Jesus preached and have shown the divine justice through his teachings, through his ministry, and ultimately through his resurrection, he, ex he uh, ex expressed the justice. And the divine justice is not to give us what we deserve, but to give us what we need. This is a key point I would like to under, I would like to ask you to understand. Human justice is about receiving what we deserve. Do good, get good, do bad, get bad. But divine justice, uh, oh, sorry, human justice is do good, get good, do, get, uh, do bad, get bad. And also God will strengthen the oppressed. But the divine justice is uh, it, is, it is not that God gives us what we deserve, but he gives us what we need. What we need is forgiveness, restoration, healing, salvation. You know, we can the list can go on. One great example we find is in Matthew chapter 20, in the parable of the uh, owner of the vineyard. This man, he puts a vineyard and he goes out into the market to find workers and he goes at nine in the morning and he gets some workers and uh, he agrees to pay them a denarius. And then uh, he goes 12 o'clock and he gets few more people 
He goes three o'clock and he gets few more people and he goes at six o'clock and asks, why are you? He goes, uh, he found people who are standing there and asked them, why are you standing here? They said, nobody hired us. And he asked them to go to his vineyard to work. So he brings them and again, uh, he puts them in work and uh, they will be working. At the end of the day, he paid everyone one denarius. The person who came in the morning started complaining, saying, we, we are working from morning till the evening and these people have come just a few minutes ago and you are paying equally to all of us. And then the master says, I agreed to pay you one denarius and I have paid. Have I done anything wrong in that? The answer is no, he did not do what, uh, what is wrong. He, he paid what he agreed for. And these people were feeling the others don't deserve receiving one denarius. Why did the owner give everyone equally? We can clearly understand from the parable, the owner gave everyone equally because everyone required money so that they can get food. These are daily labors. Okay, they are stand, the, the last group were standing and this man came and asked, why are you standing? They said, nobody hired us. This last group was uh, standing there. They were looking for the work because they, if they don't work, they won't get food. If they don't work, their families cannot run. But unfortunately, they did not get work throughout the day. That's why still they were standing. This man went and he realized the need of these people. And that's why he brought them. And he paid equally to everyone because everybody required food in their family. So they, he did not give them what they deserve, but he, gave, he has given them what they need. That we can see in Matthew chapter 20. The divine justice is clearly shown in the resurrection of Jesus actually. So that was one of the examples we have seen in Matthew 20. But in the resurrection of Jesus, it has been shown even more clearly. And that's what we read and Gladi read for us from Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 39. We all know what happened. So after the people received the Holy Spirit, Apostle Peter, he was standing and giving his first sermon. And he told the people, Jesus of Nazareth, who was known to you by the miracles. And God performed so many miracles through him. And uh, you people, for no reason, unrighteously, unjustly, have, hang, have given him into the hands of unrighteous people. And you brutally murdered him. But God raised Jesus from the dead. He is not dead anymore. And you killed him, but God raised him from the dead. You unrighteously, uh, sorry, unjustly murdered him, but God is setting things right and he raised Jesus from the dead. And then he writes in, uh, he says in, uh, from verse 36 to 39, this is what very important. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made his Jesus, sorry, this Jesus whom you crucified, both the Lord and Christ. God made him Lord as well as Christ, the master, he is the one who has authority. And he is the Messiah, the King of Israel, the Savior of Israel. He has made him the Lord and Christ. And verse 37 says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Why were they cut to the heart? Because they knew they have unjustly murdered Jesus and now they, Jesus rose again from the dead and now they are scared that Jesus may come and punish them. They were scared. That's why they were cut to the heart. So uh, they, got, they asked Peter and the other apostle, what shall we do to be saved? What shall we do? Because these people were believing God is going to execute justice based on what humans deserve. These people thought they unjustly murdered Jesus, so they deserve punishment. They So that they deserve, uh, uh, you know, your uh, punishment and they deserve judgment uh, in, in negative terms. And that is the reason they were scared. 
but our god is not a god who gives what we deserve our god is not a god his justice is not giving what we deserve but to give what we need that's why apostle peter says from verse 38 then peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the lord our god will call he is not saying oh you deserve punishment and god is going to bring his sword and going to kill all of you no he said repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins so here forgiveness is not something that they deserve but god is giving because that is what something every oppressor need these are oppressors or the who according to human justice they should be punished but god is not punishing them but he is forgiving them and accepting accepting them into his family and he is asking them to repent god has forgiven and to accept his forgiveness so god offered forgiveness and justice to all the sinners and especially to those who killed jesus this is the divine justice the divine justice is a vindication to the oppressed and it is an invitation to the oppressors this is the key of my entire message the divine justice is a is a vindication to the oppressed and an indicate an invitation to the oppressor who ever been oppressed he is accepting them here in this case jesus where the jesus was the person who was oppressed so god vindicated him and he raised him from the dead and in raising him from the dead he did not leave there he did not punish the oppressors he invited the oppressors uh, by providing forgiveness to them and asking them to repentance so it is a vindication to the oppressed oppressed and uh, invitation to the oppressor so no one has received what they deserve no one if you if you think god should give what we deserve and uh, it none of us would be able to stand in his presence according to this divine uh, sorry according to the human justice grace is offensive and unfair but according to the divine justice god is going to deal with all of us according to his grace and tender mercies as the psalmist says in psalm 103 you did not deal with us according to our iniquities but according to our, according to uh, your t- tender mercies and loving kindness that is the divine judge uh, judge i mean that is the divine Uh, justice if you remember the father of the lost son when he comes and if he if you remember uh, the lost son he made a, uh, he he prayed or he asked something to the father but the father did not answer his prayer we all should be thankful to god sometimes god does not answer our prayers the younger son asked the lost son asked i don't deserve to be called your son make me one of your servants what if the father vindicated or listened to his prayer listened to his request and made him a servant <coughs> it would be so unfortunate in his own house he would be cleaning the tables and the cups okay but god is so gracious because he knows what we need he doesn't give what we deserve only if he gives what we deserve none of us can stand here so he knows what we need that's why he knows that the younger son what the younger son required is the ring and the robe and the authority and the sonship back and that's what he provided to him and what about the judgment in the apocalypse people may ask question okay here you talk in the revelation resurrection of jesus god invited oppressors and he is offering forgiveness okay what about the great white throne judgment which we are reading in book of revelation and all the answer i would like to tell you is i don't know clearly about that but apostle paul says how it is going to be that i can show you you can find that in acts chapter 17 verse 31 
here apostle paul was having a conversation conversation with the uh, greek philosophers and uh, he explained how the gentiles also are the children of god and then he says because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained he has given assurance of this to all by raising him raising him from the dead the jesus has been appointed to judge the world in righteousness and the assure what is the assurance of it the assurance of it is the resurrection of jesus which tells the righteous judgment what god is going to provide in the days to come in the appointed date is going to be the judgment is going to be like the judgment that <coughs> that has been ex uh, executed or expressed in the resurrection of jesus christ the resurrection of jesus christ shows the kind of justice that god is going to provide so i really don't know how the divine justice in the last days to uh, in the last day is going to be but i can certainly believe and say that the divine justice which god go is going to execute or ex uh, give to all humanity is going to be completely identical with the justice he has expressed in the resurrection of jesus christ that is vindicating the oppressor oppressed and invite inviting the oppressor into his community of healing and love forgiveness and joy what is the application we take from this we need to understand divine justice is not like human justice where god gives what we deserve but god gives what we need and he fulfills that and as the disciples of jesus we out we out to judge people as jesus did you know jesus who said love your enemies do you think in his divine justice is going to punish his enemies if they reject that is another case altogether that's a different case altogether the one who asked us to love our enemies what is he going to do his enemies some say jesus god is going to destroy all his enemies by making them his friends god is going to destroy all his enemies by making them his friends i don't know how is he going to do but i know one thing for sure his justice is going to be just like how it is revealed in the resurrection of jesus and we out to uh, execute the same kind of judgment and justice in conclusion i would like to share a small story and uh, i would like to ask you to take the application from that story uh, by your by yourself it is a story of a missionary whom i know since from 2008 a uh, couple of years ago he passed away i worked with him also uh, this man is from us i don't like to reveal his name because the testimony uh, the story is so powerful and uh, it has potential uh, um, uh, it is potential to reveal and trouble their privacy that is the reason i would i don't like to reveal his name but uh, he's a very personal pr friend of mine he's a missionary in us uh, he got uh, two daughters and one son the younger daughter when entire uh, family went out <coughs> <coughs> the younger daughter was raped in his own house and uh, they found uh, the criminal and they put uh, punished and put him in the jail and unfortunately this girl she got pregnant because of that and they did not go for they did not think about uh, alternatives and these are god fearing people so they moved forward and the baby was born but since they have issues with the conscience and because of whatever happened they have given the baby into some care, uh, some uh, care centers 
where they take care of the children who doesn't have parents. And this man, he went to the jail and uh, spoke to the person who raped his daughter and said, I'm a Christian and uh, I forgive you, my entire family forgives you. And that man said, I don't care. He did not accept his forgiveness and uh, he continued in the jail. And uh, this person returned and uh, it's uh, after few years, this girl, she was grown up and she got married and uh, they were looking for some children actually. So they applied online for children. When they applied, this baby came into their house about whom later they realized this is the same baby whom they dropped in the care center. This man who was oppressed, his daughter was raped, offered forgiveness, showing Christ's love. And he did not uh, take, uh, you know, he did not uh, uh, take this opportunity to express his vengeance or he did not uh, try to take uh, uh, revenge, but he offered forgiveness just like a father. And at the same time, God did not leave his family and especially the, his daughter with the guilt and all. And the baby who you who reminds continuously about a particular event. And now she was went out and she came back. Now she is, came back in a new form who brought so much of joy into their hands, into their lives. They all accepted the baby and she, they, they, their hearts were filled with joy. Uh, seeing her. I personally felt this is a great experience where God has shown his divine love, justice and these people also try to express the same divine justice in their lives. So you can take applications from this. Only one thing I would like to tell you and leave that is we ought to execute the justice just as God did. He did not give us what we deserve, but he gave us what we need. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen, for reminding us how we should love our